Okay, so I'm still on that refined painting. You can see how much of a difference that makes in the face. And I love doing this in digital paintings because you can't do it in real paintings. I can just turn off the base painting, right? And then this is just how it always is for me. It's gonna be different for you. But my refined painting almost looks like a pastel drawing, right? On the toned paper. And on white, it might look like that, right? But with the base painting underneath, it fully fleshes it out. I can play with varying the opacity of the base painting layer, right? And remember, my base painting layer was made of a, of a few different layers, so I could try putting those in. And now, this looks pretty cool. In fact, this looks like one of my favorite painters, without even trying. A painter I think all of you should study intently. I think should be as famous as Andy Warhol, a guy named Larry Rivers. And his paintings, they're always kind of lost and found edges, things intentionally erased and unfinished. And I'm just a big fan. This is probably the most famous one of his that relates. This was, um, who am I doing? <laughs> this is Admiral Nelson's great nemesis napoleon bonaparte right the nelson famously defeated and this is larry rivers painting of napoleon and notice within this painting which i believe is like a life-size canvas there is no part of it where napoleon looks finished but it's just trying to get at his personality right playing with his pose playing with like the little details of his trousers <laughs> and his buttons Things like that. So you get to decide when things are finished. That's one great benefit of digital. Like I can play with the opacity and the blending style of these different, it's fun to play, of these different base layers, right? And then the ultimate benefit of digital at this point in the painting is that if I want to change something slightly, I am able to do that. So for one, it feels like his eyes, at least in this painting, I've painted him a little bit older looking, where this eye is a little bit smaller than it should be, so it feels a little more sunk in the head. And instead of having to repaint it, I can simply, it's mostly on my refined painting, where I define that, I can simply take my refined painting and I can take that chunk of it, because there's still more refined painting to do, right? And I can transform it. I can warp it. I can scale it, rotate it, and kind of tug at the eye and make it kind of fit better with the proportions. So that versus, oh, let's see if I can go in my history and get back to me. So there versus here, right? And that makes a big difference. And then I can go in and fix it up, right? Fix up kind of the hard edge of where I cut that little crack in his face now. But you can make little adjustment changes. It also makes him look sadder, which I kind of like. Or I might decide to bend it up a little bit. There. The human face, very difficult to draw and paint just because we are so sensitive to all those micro measurements. It really changes the likeness. And so that feels like a better fit. So that's where digital painting, we can just kind of shift the whole painting a little bit. Now in the refined painting layer right here, I'm going to turn the gray on behind. You can really see where I need to fix it. And I'm going to do it with 
Same brush, but now at 100% opacity. Let me just get that taken care of. Okay, I want to show you how to handle a, a smooth gradation. We could always use the gradient tool, of course. But the more hands-on way without having to switch tools from just our paintbrush, how to handle a gradation is something I want you to know. And this, this painter gave him a little cheeky highlight right in the eye. It's very contemporary. But he didn't do it in that eye, which is kind of odd. So usually they would match. Right. But maybe that's too much. So you can always knock things back. Okay, so the gradation. Where can I show you? So let's look. You can see where I've done the refined painting where I have it, right? So all of this looks very rough compared. And so a gradation like on his forehead from here to here, you put in the darkest tone, you work at a low opacity. So I'm going to go about 40%. And then you start blending the lightest with the darkest and then stealing the color from yourself. So each time you overlay a layer or overlap a layer at a lower opacity, you're creating a new tone that merges the two. And so this is like smudging oil paint, you know, blending it between two colors. This is how you can control your gradations. And you can always bring in a, a different color, like the green here, into it, should you want to. I like to do that because I like to introduce kind of more diversity of textures. I get to introduce this little brow frock hanging from his hairline. So again, as you do more refined painting, work at a lower opacity. So you have more opportunities to build up this texture and this color. And when I'm painting the hair, I'm not changing my brush to be as small as an individual hair. Instead, I'm letting kind of the overlaps of the different opacities cut out those shapes. But I do want to be mindful of where the shadows are. And you are not a slave to your reference, but you are inspired by it. So I was able to get that nice gradation there on the forehead. I'll do that same thing here. So we have a low opacity, you paint the lightest on top of the darkest, then you steal the color that you get from the overlap, and then you just work out from that. You keep painting at a low opacity with that color, and you can get as even a gradation as you want. I need a little bit more gradation here. I'm not sure I've found the right colors necessarily. I want to go more purple.
And remind yourself every once in a while with that navigator how much you still have left to paint. <laughs> Ideally, you want a level of finish to your digital painting where each part of it looks as considered as every other part. But the problem is there's always parts of your digital painting that you're more interested in than others. So that's, to me, where the Larry Rivers comes in and that aesthetic of leaving some parts intentionally unfinished. You're considering them, but you're just not spending as much time on them intentionally. That's why you should all study Larry Rivers. It will help you with your time management excuses. People that love painting portraits, and I have some friends that work mostly um, doing digital portraits for movie posters. They say that you learn to kind of love your subject matter just because you're spending so much time like studying their face and looking at them. Well, there you go. You can get enamored. But that's also why I don't paint like my own children or my wife. Because if you're very invested in how they look, <laughs> then you're going to be super critical, yeah. You're just going to drive yourself nuts. Yeah, the fun is finding your own answers to these, these problems. Now, one of my favorite things about digital painting that is very different than digital coloring is you're not actually choosing the color you want. You are layering to get the color you want. So you're letting the colors kind of blend together. That's why I'm working at lower opacity as I refine. So when I pick that dark blue, it's not that I want the dark blue, but I want the dark blue to affect all the colors that are underneath it. And in that way, this is a lot more like real painting. So remember that opacity is a powerful tool you have to use. Now, John, you asked, when do you know when you're finished? And I have kind of an interesting approach to this. It's kind of a digital version of the Larry Rivers approach. What Larry Rivers would do is paint up, and sometimes he'd do it with multiple sketches, but he would paint up the subject fully, like just do his best to finish it off like it was a, a technical assignment. And then he would use turpentine and rags and then erase. Because only once you've kind of worked it up fully do you feel like you have a right to then take away? So digitally, I tend to do that. I don't know where to stop, so I'll keep doing like the edges of the hair and stuff, and I'll build out. I know I'm not as interested in all of his metals and stuff, but I want to bring those up to the same level of finish as the face. But then at the end, I can just kind of erase, take, take down things, right? and they'll feel more earned because of that, right? So save it at different parts that you're pleased with it, but then if you're compelled to keep working, keep working, but then be suspicious of just the forces of inertia that just